Okay, final idle video, I, I think. <laughs> um, here we go. Uh, last time I kind of ended this abruptly. Um, <coughs> uh, a, a good way to go about this AC idle trim is you can raise or lower this value until um, whenever you turn the AC on, the AC compressor on, um, and your, your AC system is working, and you've got that air compressor pulling that extra load on the motor. If you if you set this to zero, you know, just to play with numbers and learn how it works, you'll notice that whenever you turn the AC compressor on, it's probably going to drop your motor anywhere from 50 to 200 RPM. It's just going to drop it because your motor, that extra load on the motor, it needs additional um, air coming into it to help compensate for that extra load. Um, so. Uh, you know, the base value is 6 or something like that, like 6.2. Um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to play with this value until whenever you push that AC button and it clicks on, it doesn't, it, it's not a huge jump. Um, let's say you're targeting a thousand and you add, you know, what we'll say, 7.8% uh, to it. it. It raises it up approximately, you know, maybe 75 RPM or something like that. And then the the real testament to how close you want to get this value is, um, and I used this value just for, you know, the the last video. Let's set it to one second, to where it's pretty responsive for when you push the button for AC on and AC off. Um, whenever you turn the AC off, you know this value is really close when it doesn't drop below your your original idle target without the AC on, okay? So, um, y you know, you might say, well, you know, when my AC comes on, it drops 200 RPM, so I need to, I need a lot of extra air, you know, I need like an another 150, 200 RPM, so I set this to, you know, 13, and it gives me all that extra. Well, the thing to watch for is whenever you turn it off, it's also pulling 12.9% out of it, and that's that's a relatively large change. So you might actually run into more problems with it pulling this much out of this graph than only adding, you know, a eight percent into it. So you want to play with that value, um, you know, to get a nice, easy, you know, bumps it up 50, 75, maybe 100 RPM, and whenever you push it off, it falls right back down to your original and doesn't fall way below it. Okay. Um, the last one is going to be uh, this this VSS right here. High idle above VSS. Um, I like to set this value at 1. If you're on an auto Supra, you'll notice that sometimes it doesn't go below 7 um, because it won't read anything less than 7 on the auto trains, especially on the V1. I'm, I'm going back to V1, the AM Pro here. But so you set this value to 1. So everything is basically as long as your car is moving, you're offsetting the idle target by whatever this number is. I like, you know, 100 or so, or 150. And then the wait time is the same thing that this is, okay? So let's say you're, you know, creeping right along, um, stop and go traffic, and, uh, you know, you move forward a little bit, and your, your, your ECU is sensing vehicle speed, so you're barely moving, it's reading like 10, 15 miles an hour, and you, let's say you set this to two. So when you come to a stop and it no longer senses vehicle speed, you have an, I, an additional idle offset of 100 RPM for two seconds, so it will wait 1,000, 2,000, and then bring this 100 RPM out of your, your, your new target while the vehicle is moving. This is one of the biggest things that will help with whenever um, you know you guys are cruising right along at really low speeds and really low throttles and you throw it into neutral real quick and instead of dropping way down or dying it's that additional little one to two hundred RPMs that you throw at it to keep it as long as the vehicle is moving these two graphs are <laughs> without these two graphs it would uh, you would have a much more unstable idle as, as crazy as it sounds these two are probably some of the biggest um, factors, uh, more so than maybe some of this. I know it sounds crazy, but these are the reliable guys right here, okay? Um, so play with those values and, and, and get them right. That pretty much covers all of the idle. The only other things I'll touch on 
whenever you guys are going back and trying to fine tune all this stuff is um, you know you can play with your gains you know, after you've got all this stuff play with your feedback rates and watch these values and you'll notice it becomes more responsive um, the higher the feedback rate and it will actually cap if you threw like a big number at this you know I think that's actually its cap um, uh, it almost goes you'll, you'll see it actually responding slower and it's not responding slower it's making such big changes so fast it looks like it's slower so it's actually worse so a higher feedback rate does not necessarily mean a better idle you'll usually get the best in between 200 and 500 the most consistent and reliable sometimes 600 and 800 work really well but um, usually it's between two and five hundred on everything that I've ever used if all these other graphs are right everything is dependent on you know all this other stuff being right and you know I'm going back into again I'll bring it up again if you guys have vacuum leaks if your map sensor is not reading right if your coolant temperature sensor is not working properly um, it, all of this stuff all this hard work that you've done right here um, it doesn't mean anything because it, you know if, if, if it's reading um, you know z zero um, if, if it's reading atmospheric pressure you know then your fuel values are way off and if your fuel values are way off then none of this stuff even means anything because it's super rich or it's super lean or it's probably gonna be super rich but you you get my point if your coolant temperature sensor doesn't work this could be zero or and it could be negative 40 so it could be targeting 1200 all the time or if this value was way down over here it could be targeting you know like wh whatever this value would be so it'll target the maximum values either way if um, uh, if, if you have uh, you know real small vacuum leaks and you guys keep go round and round and round and round and round but you have this consistent up and down cycling pattern where you know you get that 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 engine cycle where it goes 1200,000 1200,000 1200,950 you know right in there a lot of this stuff right here if you've done what I've shown you and it's still wrong go do a boost leak test and look for vacuum leaks because chances are that is your problem you have a mechanical issue that needs to be sorted and it, it just it can't be stated enough all of this stuff is based on how mechanically sound your your motor is um, even fuel pressure comes into it but that's more or less it for idle um, I don't think there's any other um, no there's our boost fuel trim uh, that's pretty much it for idle um, you know watch watch your fuel tables uh, as, as you're doing all that idle watch this whole section right here and if you need to make adjustments in here you know um, to give it a little more or a little less um, you know go go for it just make sure when you're tuning idle you have to be watching several things at one time to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be and that will really really help with idle inconsistencies um, <coughs> see two feedback off that's it um, the next video I'm going to uh, now, now that you guys have a good idea of how all of this works now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the start tables okay um, and show you how all of this works and then we will actually get into um, you know all, all it, it's more or less up to you guys at this point if you understand everything to this point now it's pretty simple you know after the next few videos all you guys are gonna do is you're just gonna go in here and you're gonna select these values and you're just gonna raise them or lower them to at that appropriate load and RPM um, point there at, at that particular plot you're gonna give it so much fuel and I'll help you smooth this out a little bit and show you kinda sorta what it should look like we'll, we'll clean this up a little bit and make it look like an actual good map um, but We'll, we'll call this a video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. We'll start working on these starts. And then after that, we'll, we'll go into uh, the fuel table and start cleaning all this up. All right. Thanks for watching.